In today's Leeds news, Amplitude deal done, Leeds to name Steinson in senior recruitment role, Robles heads to Saudi, and Leeds United takeover complete. Morning folks, Jay here at The View on the 18th of July and mark your calendars for day one of a brand new era of ownership for Leeds United Football Club as the EFL have officially ratified the takeover of Leeds United by 49ers Enterprises led by the York, Jed York and Parag Marathe as well as a ton of investors that have been coming out. It's a positive day. I've watched a lot of stuff this morning so I ask you to bear with me in this video. It'll be slightly longer than normal. I'm excited about this. I'm genuinely excited, but there's a lot of notes. I've got a lot of paper. I've got a lot of bits around me to try and bring all of this into as concise a, a video as possible. So bear with me. We will get through the news first, and then we'll get into the takeover stuff, who's who, what's going on, and all that as we get into it. But we'll start off with this. Um, Phil Hay and Graham Smith have confirmed that Ethan Ampadu has agreed a deal with Leeds United. The player will move from Chelsea to Leeds United on an initial £7 million deal that could rise to £10 million if add-ons are achieved. 22-year-old Wales midfielder and defender is currently going through a medical, so if you're watching this in the evening, it's probably done by now. Stuff's going to age really quickly this week and next week, so you know I do these very early in the morning, so um, you don't need to jump into the comments and tell me if a deal is done. I'll be watching it myself anyway, but it's... Yeah, just bear with me on that kind of stuff because it, 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 it's tricky doing them in the morning, but that's that anyway. Uh, Ampadu, as I said, is going through his medical, expected to be announced to play today or has been announced. And if he has already been announced, here's a picture of him in a lead shirt. There you go. That covers that one off. Uh, Leeds apparently have beaten off competition for the player as well. Uh, according to uh, 90 Minutes, Leeds beat Sheffield United, Burnley, Fulham, West Brom and Coventry to get this deal done. So a couple of Premier League clubs involved in that as well. Uh, there's a lot of conversation saying that um, there will be more players coming in. Kamara from Rangers, Piro from Swansea, have all been talked about as well as a couple of others. So nothing official or from, from credible sources just yet, so we'll hold tight on that. Also, just to say, that picture you just saw of Ethan Ampadu, a massive thanks uh, to Sean Windsor on Twitter who sent that to me because I was looking for him this morning. It's also in the thumbnail as well, so appreciate that, Sean. Thanks very much. That's that one. Let's move on to um, a new technical director, and Nick Weber is the current transfer guru, whatever way you want to call him for this transfer window in filling the vacant Victor Orta sporting director role. Well, according to the Athletic Leeds are set to appoint Tottenham Hotspur performance director Greta Steinson as the new as a, into a new unnamed currently technical role, senior technical role, which looks like it will replace Victor Orta. Um, Steinson has been at Spurs for the last season. He has made the decision to leave Spurs himself, who was expected to leave in this summer. Um, Leeds are restructuring the entire recruitment team behind the scenes. It was initially thought Leeds would bring in a direct replacement for Victor Orta. Steinson will fill that role, but there is other and bigger moves behind the scenes being done on the recruitment side of things as well. Uh, Steinson has had similar roles at Bolton Wanderers. He was at Fleetwood Town as the head of development and recruitment, as well as Everton uh, as the um, uh, director of football at Everton. Uh, in his Spurs role since last season, he's made the decision, as I've said, to move away from the club. He's described as having a very straightforward and honest approach and is known for having a complete contempt for BS with stuff. So that's also very, very positive. Uh, a former colleague of his at Everton said that the, he would describe him as a pit bull when he sees something and if he wants something, he goes and gets it, which is good to see. The Everton transfers are a bit hit and miss, but again, transfer budgets and all that kind of stuff and, and who managers want. It's a different role, it's a different club. Different things can happen. So it's an interesting one. More stuff is happening. So yesterday alone, Ampadu and Steinson were announced. Then the EFL ratified the deal. All that looks like it was done prior to yesterday anyway, based on the movements. I don't think any of these transfers or appointments are coincidence with the EFL appointment. I think they were all after that. So it does look like the EFL um, ratification was delaying leads getting signs. We were told it wasn't. We were told it absolutely wasn't. But it appears, it appears that it was. So uh, let's move on to some exits. And Joel Robles officially left Leeds United yesterday and said his goodbyes in a genuine statement, which is different to the usual PR statements that we got from Mark Rock and Robin Cook. Uh, Robles, sad to see him leave to Leeds, but now we know why. Um, he has signed for second tier Saudi club Al Qadisiyah, um for the rest of this, for, the, for their new season. Uh, it's a shame to see him go, but he moves on with our blessings. And I thank him for uh, everything he did for Leeds last season and the amount of uh, caring. If you watch the social media, he genuinely cared about last year and he's very disappointed Leeds, stayed, went, Leeds went down, so it's disappointing. Let's get on to the big stuff. Let's get on to the main story. This is where we're going to spend most of our time. I'm going to try and slow this right down. So, as I said, I've got about six pages of notes here, so I'm trying to put them in order. Stay with me. Stay with me.
we get through this. Uh, so as I said last night, the EFL re- confirmed the ratification of the 49ers Enterprises buyout of Legion United from, from Andre Radrazani. Unsurprisingly, the first person to come out and talk publicly in a, in a face-to-face interview was Radrazani. Shock and horror on that one. Um, where basically he apologized for everything that happened. He said it's not where he wanted to be, but he thinks it's in a better place than it was. He was asked about Victor Orta as well, and he made comments about Maybe he shouldn't have followed Victor as uh, completely as he did and that his policy of bringing in younger players who haven't reached their potential or haven't shown what they can do yet but are taught to have potential was a wrong approach in the Premier League, bringing in players from the Austrian League. The gap was too big to the Premier League. So rewriting his history a little bit, but um, I have offered him a chance to come and talk to us on the channel and do a proper interview where we ask him difficult questions. He won't reply to that, but the offer is out there if he wants to do it. So let's get into takeover stuff, and there's a lot of moving parts with this, but the changes in the club are as follows. Parag Marat, they will step in and become the new chairman of Leeds United. Rudy Klein-Thomas, we'll get to him in a second, will become the new vice chairman of Leeds United. Angus Kinnear will remain as CEO, and I'm unsure if we'll see a, a fixing of his legacy at Leeds United. I think I, I still think he was possibly a fall guy for the two boys. I think he was maybe pushed to the front doing program notes. CEOs don't write program notes, I think. Maybe his sense of humor at times didn't come across the right way, but better make it up to do from Angus and we'll have to see how he gets on there. And then a ton of new investors. Pete Lowy is still on the director's board, by the way. He's not named in the statements, but he is on the website as one of the main investors in the club. So one of the main directors. So he is still there. Uh, so interesting questions. Who is Rudy Klein Thomas? Well, he's a big guy. And I mean, a big guy as an, as an influence. He started off as a basketball agent, was the youngest basketball agent in the NBA and, and found it very difficult to break into sports. NFL pretty much closed the door on him and he had trouble with the NBA as well. A lot of that came down to race and background and, you know, a lot of bigotry and stuff that went on in that sport, in those sports around the time of him coming into it. He's broken a lot of walls down for, for black athletes and African-American athletes, which is great to see. Um, He is the co-founder of Mastery Ventures, which is a venture capitalist firm based out of New York. He recently purchased the name I wrote down on a different piece of paper, Athletes First, which are a a talent agency for players. And he also set up a Players Tech Summit six years ago, which was a corporate gathering that allowed entrepreneurs um, from a venture capitalist's background to open investment opportunities, primarily for African-American athletes who were restricted on getting access to them. So Great to see that as well. And a very, it changes Leeds and makes Leeds a very diverse looking club now as well. You know, he's going to get a chance. To, and as, as the Athletic said, he gets to walk into a new stadium, sit down as a vice chairman with open arms and welcomed by everybody, which is brilliant to see considering what he went through with sports in his early days. So, yeah, huge amount of influence, represents a ton of people that are involved in this. He is seen as the lead investor guy as part of the big, the smaller, smaller and larger big pools, as in large amount of people. You know what I mean? Um, and it and will have a huge amount of influence when it comes to uh, marketing deals, basically how Leeds are going to be viewed and exposure for Leeds United across the world. This is huge for Leeds. Um, he is, he does, however, have own 20% stake in Plymouth Argyle. He is the investor that had a stake in uh, Plymouth. However, he is apparently gifting that back to the fans, which is a lovely gesture. No fee, not selling it, giving it back. And they, he did manage to get Plymouth promoted as well in the, the first year of his involvement there as well, which bodes well for Leeds United as well. We'll get some serial winners in here. So that's a nice touch. But he, as part of this deal, he can't have any stake in any other clubs that it has to be pushed on. Um, his investment groups have also got involved and early investments in the likes of Zoom as well, a lot of blue chip and tech companies as well. So good track record investments as well. So that's where that money is coming from. And that's who Rudy Klein Thomas is. Get used to seeing him around the place, I would imagine. Would be a big influence on Leeds United and great to see him in as the as the vice chairman of Leeds United. And I welcome both him, Prag Marate, and him to Leeds United of what will be, um, as I described yesterday, a message to uh, Lance uh, Jr. I said, uh, you're going to love this, then you're going to hate it, then you're going to love it again, then you'll probably hate it a bit more, but then you're going to love it a lot more at the end of it. It's a roller coaster and you'll love being at Leeds United. So welcome on board to Rudy and, to, and Prag in his new role and the best luck to them because if they're successful, we're successful, and that's all that is, that is important. So what else has gone on? Well, Ellen Road is a big part of this as well. A lot of people will be concerned after what happened with Roger Zani's comments about his assets and what he can do what he wants with his assets. Well, it's no longer his assets. Ellen Road is part of the takeover, and the Legion United Supporters Trust this morning have confirmed that they have secured an asset of community value for another five years on Ellen Road. That means that Ellen Road cannot be sold without... Um, 
consultation with supporters groups in Leeds. So the supporters trust as part of that as well, which is great to see. There's a lot of plans for the stadium as well. Marate was asked in his press conference, sorry, in his um, interview today on, L- on LeedsUnited.com or LUTV. Go check that out. Go listen to it. Get a cup of coffee. It's about 25 minutes long. Sit down and enjoy it because he says a lot of the things we wanted to hear. He talks about them being a passenger in the background and not being able to make decisions. He's a notebook on things that he will do differently and what he wants to do and what he won't do based on what he has seen over the last six years. Uh, on the stadium, he made some really interesting comments about Ellen Road. He said that the atmosphere in the ground is menacing, which it is, but it's also great. It's, it's a fantastic atmosphere. And he said he'd blown away the first time he went into Ellen Road. It didn't feel like he was a a board member he felt like he was a fan he said the only frustration he has is he had to sit down he doesn't like sitting down he has a lot of kinetic energy and likes to move around an awful lot so terrace go back in in, in the cup maybe you can go and uh, stand over there which would be good from a uh, pretty bad idea so um yeah on the stadium stuff he basically said that you know ellen road he doesn't want to remove the uh, atmosphere that he described as menacing and he doesn't want to take away from the authenticity of what ellen road is they want to improve the stadium they're not moving they're not moving there will not be a brand new stadium. The people who talk about the Levi Stadium situation at the 49ers, it's a massively different set of circumstances. If you want to know the circumstances, you can go check them out. In the interview with Prag Marate, sorry, in the interview with Cam Mimmon that I did a couple of months ago, it's um, it's in there. It basically says that the they couldn't build, they couldn't develop the stadium where they, where they already were because they had issues with the local councils. So they went to where their training ground world, which was 20, 30 miles away or maybe more away. But they had a training facility there and they built a stadium there. So what the fans weren't happy about it, but they had no choice. Hands were tied in it. Slightly different leads. Leads on the land around the Ellen Road. They have a huge amount of space to redevelop the stadium without having to go and look for, you know, it's different in America. It's very different. A lot of the, 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 the cities are very involved in the stadium side of things and you know, they, they own a lot of the stadiums as well. So there's that. But he doesn't want to change the stadium. He just wants to make it better and he wants to improve the, the atmosphere and he wants to get it, you know, expand it so more fans can be in the stadium, which is what we want to hear. It's, it, that's the good stuff that we're looking forward to hearing. So that was that piece. And um, he said on the on recruiting managers, he said, look, we, we were trying to get the right people in the right positions. He said, a good, this is what I love this, one of the comments he made, a good chairman is quiet, is a quiet chairman. Now, we've been used to some very vocal and very public chairmen between Roger Zani, Chilino, Bates. Um, it's been a long time since Leeds have had a chairman who just got on with business and let other people do the job, and he plans on doing that. He said he will be very much in the background. He will hire the right people to do their jobs, and if he's doing his job correctly and the club is running properly, he will have Zoom calls and meetings with these people to keep him up to date because he will be in the flow with them, and it's not a case that he has to do everything. This is what Leeds needed. Leeds didn't need three people running a club. They needed teams of people who had to report in to an owner to do a profession and do it like a business. That's really, really good to see. So that's the part. He went through the recruitment stuff as well and said, yes, we did take our time on the recruitment. We interviewed a lot of managers. We also did two interviews where they interviewed managers and it was done the other way around where they had to sell the club, essentially. Farka talked about that as well. And he got on to Farka as well. But he said, I'll be quietly in the back. A good chairman is a quiet chairman. Hire the right people to do the right jobs. And I can't wait to see what he changes in the background at Leeds because it's a, it's a tough club to get involved with Leeds and, and speak to. So, fingers crossed, some good stuff coming there. Um, he said that he, it sucked that Leeds didn't stay up. He, he said it hurt him. But he said Leeds is a Premier League club. But don't get fooled for a second. The Premier League needs Leeds United as well. And it's a big statement. He also said, sorry, the terms they used that I was really drawn into on this are, are these. He refers to Leeds, the fans, the whole thing as us and we, where if you go back to Radrozani's comments, a lot of it was me and I and my assets, my club and all of that kind of stuff. This is very much a more inclusive. In the statement, which I'm going to put a couple of clips up now, they talk about how they, um, they talk about how I've lost my train of thought now. Yeah, he talks about how they want the fans to be the centre of what they do here which is a big, again, another another important statement to make. Um, Farke came up as well. He said that as far as he was concerned, Daniel Farke didn't have the right or full deck of cards when he got to the Premier League. In other words, didn't have the funding on players to be successful in the Premier League. And he said that's something that Leeds want to rectify and he will be given everything he needs to be a success at Leeds. And they plan on when they get back to the Premier League of giving him the full deck to be successful. And they see him as being a very successful manager across Europe in the future. So they're investing quite heavily in him and um, before i get to the couple of comments from the statement we'll get to this piece as well some other statements that he made he said that he shares the passions of the fans but he also shares the frustration as what well, as to what has happened at leeds why did it happen how has that happened why did we let this happen again as he said they were in the background they didn't have the decision making powers but he said we plan on fixing this and getting leads back where they belong 
Um, he went on then to say that um, he will come at this with his experience from the franchise model in the States. Um, he understands how the club should be run and he'll get this club back. And he said, um, I will make mistakes. But he said, I'll get a lot right as well. And that's that's honest and that's open. Everyone makes mistakes in their jobs. Everybody. It doesn't matter what job you have, the top highest, highest level, the highest skill set or the lowest, lowest entry level jobs. People make mistakes in jobs and they learn as they go. So he, he's being honest, he's being upfront, and I love that. We'll get to a couple of the statements then as well. So I'm just gonna open these up real quickly. I'm not I'm trying not to cut this video as much as I can so we can get it in one go. Um and there's some really interesting statements. And we'll, we'll show them up on screen here and we can go through them in a bit in, in a bit of detail. There are some parts in this that um We'll start with Rudy Klein Thomas's comments. And this is what he's had to say about it. Klein Thomas said, with my family hailing from Leeds, it's an honor to be able to uplift this incredible community. This is more than just an opportunity. It's a personal mission. The chance to reinvigorate the cherished Leeds culture to create a platform that attracts the world's finest players and build a truly global brand that celebrates diversity is a project that thrills me. Big parts in that the diversity aspect is important and massive, but also the work to attract the world's finest players. They don't describe, they don't come across to me as making empty promises and they don't come across to me uh, as saying things too lightly. It's a big statement. It's a very big statement. Um, Angus Kinnear has made some comments about it as well and what he has said. And again, there are some key bits to take out of this. 49ers Enterprises will bring fresh leadership, management, and a commitment to investment, which I'm confident will meet our ambitions to compete for promotion and remain in the top flight as an established Premier League club. I know Parag, Rudy, and the 49ers Enterprises will keep supporters central to their plans during their custodianship. And I'm excited to work in realizing the true potential of this great club. Kinnear's got a lot of grief. He's got a lot of stick. He did turn up for the last game of the season. He did face the music, but the rest didn't. Key bits in this, a commitment to investment is huge. And then he also, as he says, um, describes them as custodians. They're not calling themselves owners. They're doing this the right way. Parag says it a lot. I'm holding the torch currently. You know, it'll be passed on to somebody else. The custodianship of the club. I am a custodian. That's what they are. You know, a lot of people give me a lot of stick on Twitter when I start referring to Radrozani during the back end of his tenure as the custodian and looking after the club and he has to give it to somebody else and it's not his. It's just his right now. A lot of people told me it's his club. He can do what he wants with it. Parag Marathe is doing things the right way. The 49er Enterprise are doing things the right way, referring to themselves as custodians of Leeds United. So, you know, again... Again, I just like the language. I like what they're saying. I like the finer little connective tissue and what they say, reading in between the lines. And I like an awful lot of what they've had to say. So it's really, really good. But Marathe's had some stuff to say as well. And this is what he's had to say on him. This is an important moment for Leeds United and we are already hard at work. The transition is a necessary reset to chart a new course for this club. We have already appointed a highly respected first team manager with a track record of success. And we are confident Leeds will field a competitive squad to contend for promotion next season. It's a privilege to carry the torch as I know we have a responsibility to ensure that this club makes our staff, players, supporters and Leeds and the Leeds and Yorkshire communities proud. There's been a lot of rumour coming out of the club already about, you know, significant pay rises for staff that were underpaid, new roles, you know, a big budget's been increased. It's great. It's great. It should be done. Pro- Leeds hasn't been run properly for a very, very long time. You know, despite the fact we got back to the Premier League, it hasn't been run behind the scenes. Anyone who knows what's going on behind the scenes at least will know things haven't been done properly. And now we're going to get a chance to see it being done properly. And I'm super excited to see where this goes. I'm going to have to wait and see. As I finish this video and wrap this up, all I can say, my own personal thoughts are, I'm excited for the new era at Leeds United. I'm excited for the 49ers Enterprise as a part of Leeds United officially and fully now. And I'm excited to see where this goes. I cannot wait to step foot in Ellen Road this year. I plan on being there an awful lot more this year than I've been during the Premier League years. I can't wait. I just can't wait to see what where this goes. So a lot of stuff is going to happen this week and next week. It's all positive, big moves forward. And I'm super excited about this. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, there will be skeptics. and We should be always keep a minor amount of skepticism in the back of our head to make sure that we're, we're safe with stuff as well. But on the face of things, this looks good. Folks, that's going to be it for me today. And what is a very positive day for Leeds United. And we don't get to say that far too often. So thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. And I'll see you tomorrow morning for more Leeds news. Have a great day. Bye.